Hello again, everybody. Well, today we are in Soddy Daisy near Chattanooga, and today we are at Poe's Tavern, and we are checking down out the Pioneer Days. Now, Poe's Tavern's got some interesting history. We're going to go ahead and check it here in a minute. This is an interesting little festival that happens. I believe this is the sixth or seventh one that they've done on this, so let's take a look and see what we can see today, shall we? Let's go have some fun. We've got a lot of history here. This gentleman's teaching how they, the Cherokees threw their thing. This is the good old days museum. And looks like they are looking for some donations to help with things. This looks like a bunch of Civil War stuff. This is Tennesseans for living history. And i show you how Got the blacksmith, portable blacksmith, all that other stuff. And we got what looks like a teller thing. This gentleman's even using a carbide light, an actual carbide light. Well, one interesting thing is that Saudi Daisy is doing a fundraiser. They have had an opportunity to buy the old Saudi bank and make the place the new home of the museum. So if you get a chance to, they definitely could use your help. Here we go, here's the Poe's Tavern, and there is a sign on it, we'll check it out here in a little bit, and you can definitely see, I don't know if this is the original location, if anybody knows, please just comment below. Um, if not, I know it definitely was in this area, but we're going to take a look over at this sign and see what it says. Okay, so they they rebuilt it. So it was, huh, interesting. You can see this these beautiful hand-hewn logs. You just don't see those that often anymore. Well, we're gonna take a look and see what we can see over here. Looks like they're grinding some corn. See, this is the old school way of putting the cob in. <laughs> getting the corn off the cob. Pretty cool. And they're making cider over here. So pretty cool. You can see that they have definitely peels it off with his needed sleeve. Okay. Here we got a millstone too. But let's go over here and let's go over here and take a look and see. I don't know if anybody can go in or not. I see people walking in there. So maybe. Boy, they've done a nice job. Sorry about that. There's a little dip. But see, this is when you take the axes and hew them out by hand. It really shows. Hey, why don't you go A lot of people think these are small, but this was the this was the size house at the time. Oh, wait a minute. Take the mask off. Put it back up. <laughs> I gotta go home and bake the cake. Bake the cake? You did all your cooking and everything on that. So I was right, the original Post Tavern was a little bit down the road that away. Maybe one day I'll go back and take a look, but they have done a beautiful job with this. Hey, those are right here. Stop. 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 No, I was just explaining to her that three of these rifles, these two rifles and this rifle are, are Soddy Daisy rifles. And they were produced probably within 10 miles of here. Um, Look like ordinary <laughs> they made guns here from the mid 1800s, uh, well up into uh, the early 1900s. Uh, these two rifles are laying on the table, are what's referred to as chunk guns or, or match guns. They're certainly too heavy and too long to have been used for practical purposes for you know putting meat on the table, so to speak. But what was popular uh, in that early 1900 period was uh, something we would think of like a turkey shoot now. Uh, they had uh, log matches, 
and they shot for accuracy. Uh, and typically, they would put money in the pot. People would gather from all over the area that shot competition, and they would have a, a cow or a hog or whatever, and they would divide up that meat from the winner down the line to the last man. And uh, they said that the, the last man, the loser, got to dig the lead out of the bank and reclaim the lead so he'd have something to practice with so hopefully he could win the next match. Nice. So how heavy are the two long guns? Uh, I would suspect that these two rifles are probably in the 20, 20 21 pound range. Oh, that's not bad. I, uh, I, I thought they would have been a lot heavier than that. The, the majority of the weight's in the barrel. Uh, oh, yeah. And like I said, you know, a typical uh, earlier Tennessee gun as we think of it, like like the, the flintlock on top. You know, this is a six and a half, seven pound gun. It's fairly light and something you could carry and certainly hunt with uh, all day. Would never happen with, with one of these later chunk guns. But but they weren't designed for that purpose. Uh, this is an earlier Saudi gun. Uh, again, when you talk about Saudi Daisy, it's, it's referred to as a school and uh, Basically, the families that built guns in this area all had a certain style. There were certain things that they all sort of did, and it wasn't like they went to a school and learned. They just picked up that style, and it's referred to as a school. And you, you know, there are obviously a number of schools if you're heavy into Kentucky long rifles uh, uh, around the country, but north. So this gentleman was the one that actually helped hew these logs. They didn't have any logs left. It had been stripped down from the old location so they had to completely rebuild from scratch but they did it the accurate way with the special axe i'm gonna go back here in a minute and take a look it's pretty cool and while they're closing up stuff unfortunately it got here a little late in the day you see that a lot of these guys this is like a an encampment in the civil war that you would have seen Let's see if they'll let me up in the upstairs. I'm going to take a look. I'll be right back. See, there's what the original Post Tavern. Oops, sorry for the reflection. Let's see if I can't do that a little bit better. There we go. That's what the original Post Tavern looked like, and that's Haste and Poe. Now, you can look this up on the internet and see some more info. Oh, very nice. Now, granted, they didn't have power back then, but look at this. And this is how it would have been, minus the electricity. They did a beautiful job on this. They even have a pretty safe over there. And the reason it's called a safe is because it's got the mesh in it. You also would have holes punched in metal sheeting. It kept the food safe from flies. But anyway, let's take a look around a little bit more, shall we? Well, guys, that is all there is. Oh, look at that. You have kids. Look at that beautiful, big playground out in the back. So, that is it for the Pioneer Days up here in Saudi Daisy. I am off to go on some more journeys. So, until then, why don't you go on a journey of your own? We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.